Hello, welcome to the California Subject Examinations for Teachers um, Preparation Course for Social Science for uh, the November administration. Um, some of you will be taking it in November. Um, if you're taking it a little bit later than that, that's fine. We'll have some of November to actually prepare for the course. I know this is a one-month class overall, but some of you will stay in touch with me into November. So um, let me know if I can assist uh, after the course date ends um, at the end of October. Uh, so we have Melissa, Jessica, Ashlyn, Lee, uh, Thomas, who, I, who may have dropped, I'm not sure, um, Matt, and Todd. So welcome to all of you. Um, it's not an enormous class, so it should be manageable for all of us to stay in touch with one another and use the resources we have to uh, make for uh, a very uh, comprehensive review of the exam questions and topics. Oh, I wanted to go over for you today. Uh, some of the resources that I used to pass the exam, some of the things that proved very helpful for me in successfully completing it the first time I took it. Now, uh, I, my background is in comparative literature. I got an English degree from uh, San Diego State um, years ago, and uh, I've been teaching for about 11 years in high schools, mostly history and English. But I wanted to get that supplemental so I'd have the accreditation behind me uh, and could teach wherever I wanted to if, if the the time uh, came up for me to tra transition to another school. Um, so basically what did I use to uh, successfully complete the course the f or the tests the first time? Um, one of the uh, one of the resources I picked up right away, and this is actually the first resource I bought, um, is this uh, exam online CSET social science um, test booklet. Now you'll find a lot of things about it that are uh, wanting. Most, most specifically, uh, it's not written all that well. The writing leaves a little bit to be desired. Some of the way the work's put together is very clustered and or unorganized. At the end of the day, though, it has the content that you're looking for. So if um, you're looking for a resource that will have the pinpointed information for the exam, this is it for 114 and 115 for the world history and U.S. history portions. Uh, I in no way work for them. I'm not endorsing this book as the panacea of all your problems for the CSET, but it did help me. Uh, uh, some of the other resources I use, you can get the high school books, the Kaplan or the uh, Barron's books. These are really helpful. Um, this U.S. history one is has a lot of examples that are similar to uh, in style uh, to the test questions you'll find on the um, CSET exam. Uh, I use this to give myself more information and give me a variety of tests because what I found in the CSET, and I want you to take note of this right away, is we're going to go over a lot of test questions, we're going to go over a lot of information, and I think uh, in looking at Ashlyn's uh, emails to me and her comments, She's saying, okay, I'm, am I studying too much? Am I studying too little? She said she had a tendency to study maybe a little bit too much when she got started, and she didn't want to study so much in one area that she missed the kind of broader picture. Well, you can get caught up in the details, but what I want to say is when I took the test the first time, they had very little information on, on Jackson, the War of 1812. It was in there, but it wasn't really emphasized as a major portion of the exam. When my students took it the first time I, after I t took, uh, first taught this class, they came back to me and many of them were very successful. I don't think I had any students that didn't pass it. But I had one student came back, come back and say, well, you got to get some information in there about the um, Indian removal, more inf information about Indian removal in Jackson. And I had some information in there, but they were talking about the overall uh, looking at Jackson as a president overall. Well, that's a pretty wide topic. I mean, you could know something about Indian removal and Jackson's policies, but not know other things about his presidency. So what I want to caution you, but also reassure you, is that please do review all the topics we go over. Uh, get enough confidence in each each um, section that you know the general idea and you'll do well on the exam. You can overstudy, as Ashton was, was considering, um, but give yourself enough time to review all the sections of the CSET topics. Um, so this will help. If you're if you're reading a lot of this, or you're reading your old history books, and it's just too much reading for you, uh, I'm going to go ahead and recommend a couple of things uh, that were very helpful for me. One was this um, 
1776, the David McCullough audiobook. Threw it in the truck, uh, in the CD player, and listened on the way to work. I probably listened, I probably listened to this, uh, probably listened to it six or seven times now, and it's a good narrative. He tells a good story. Um, you'll probably get a little bit more information and details that you'll need, but what's nice about that is you can really, in your essays, show a deep understanding of the topic for, in this case, the American Revolution. For a more general resource that spans um, a um, pre-colonial period all the way up to the uh, 19, early 1990s, late, late 80s, uh, this Don't Know Much About History um, book on tape. Of course, you can pick up the book. What I'm providing for you now is um, some audio resources. Some of you are audio learners. Some of you are multimodal. Many of you are multimodal, I've noticed. And most of us are busy. We have jobs. We have other classes we're taking. So the reason I recommend these audio books is you don't have to go out and buy them. You can probably find the podcasts uh, if you have uh, iTunes. Or if you go online and just get the MP3s, you can download a lot of these or similar um, information on history. Let me go back to recommending just this particular one. The reason I like this, the author does a good job of do, giving a good survey of all the information you need to know, plus a few details in there. He doesn't overload you with details and background, but he gives you enough of the details to make your essay writing interesting. So if you you know, if, if your essay, if you had a problem in essays of being too bland and, and getting those the specific details in there, uh, this this source will do it as well as covering the topics. So I think it's a good time saver. So you might want to pick that up. You can get used copies on the internet. I haven't priced them lately. I think you can probably get one for under ten dollars, but I might be wrong there. I think I got this for about fourteen dollars when I bought it, and I think you can get it now for about nine. Uh, we don't all have money to go out and get these resources. Please, if you're if if you want to write me an email and say, look, David, I paid for this class. The class is expensive enough. What resources can we find on the internet? I'll go out and find some podcasts for you. Just give me um, some specific areas that you'd like to review, and I will upload those videos. You will see some videos in the course that might help your studies. I will try to find audio and video specifically geared to your interests or your areas of need. So email me on that. I don't, you know, you, you did spend enough on this course. I'm just giving you some resources that work for me. I'm not saying go out and spend extra money. I'd like this to be uh, as complete and comprehensive a review for you that you'd need. Let me give you one more recommendation, just the same. Uh, this AP uh, World History, these flashcards. Um, work really well uh, for general view. Now there's a lot of information here, but what I did is I I looked at the CSET main um, topics, the actual areas that they're going to test you on. I went and downloaded the test questions, either printed them out or just looked them on my inter on the computer, and I, I looked at the, the subtest topics, and I grabbed the cards out of the box that were relevant to those areas. I didn't I didn't read through all each card. I pulled those out put that bundle together and I actually took them with me on test day and I uh, I had them in my pocket and at one point um, you know right before the test I was like oh I'm really gray on this one area so I took them out and I did some review well it just so happens that the review I did I think it was on the Indus Valley uh, and China paid off big time because two of the cards that I happened to have reviewed uh, were they had questions on those on the test so they're nice because you can stick them in your pocket you're busy during the day, during your lunch break, you can take them out, look over them, take some notes, or during right before the test, you can have them on hand to flip through them. Um, they don't search your pockets, and I wasn't by any means cheating. I didn't have them in my pocket and was looking through them during the exam. This was before. Um, so, uh, But I do think they're a good, good uh, quick review uh, for you. Uh, or some other things. If you can get past um, kind of a pompous, pompous accent, this... Um, as far as Rome goes, of study of Rome, this uh, audiobook on Tacitus gives you possibly a little bit too much detail. Uh, cause it's, it's, but if you want a, a, a solid review of Rome, this would do it. Otherwise, just look at the notes I have online here. I'm glad to have you uh, joined us here, and uh, please call me. As far as your specific interests, Melissa, I was looking at your, quote, your, your post there. As far as California history goes, um, it's seven questions 
out of a total of 118 questions. That's 6% of the exam. If you look at just that quiz, just that subtest, it's only